The Hobo and the Hail Mary, Understanding Risk and Portfolio Optimization. Portfolio Planning is a retirement portfolio optimization system for IRAs, 401ks, and other retirement savings. It's a safe drawdown system that eliminates the uncertainty as to how long retirement savings will last, and it produces significantly higher income than traditional methods. With traditional methods, the income is flat, but there's no certainty when the income will run out. With portfolio planning, the income will vary from year to year. Shortfalls are possible, but the probability of a shortfall is low and controlled by the investor. More importantly, the income lasts exactly as long as planned, and the median projected income is much higher than traditional methods. This means that about halfway into a 35-year retirement, there's a 50% chance the income will be more than twice as high as traditional methods. There are three videos to help understand the portfolio planning advantage. The first is this video, The Hobo and the Hail Mary, Risk and Portfolio Optimization. The goal of this video is to understand how portfolio planning improves retirement income through portfolio optimization. We'll discuss risk and portfolio optimization, investor and gambler behavior, the effect of investment length on optimal portfolios, and the unimportance of year-to-year -year volatility in long-term investments. In the second video, the composition of complex portfolios is discussed, entitled Protons, Electrons, and Portfolions. The effects of fees are discussed in the third video, entitled Fees and Monkey Poo. Question. Which of the following is the lowest risk investment? A bank savings account insured by the FDIC, a growth stock mutual fund, or a lottery ticket? Answer. None of the above. Investments do not have risk. To understand, we must learn from the hobo. The hobo only has a few dollars left over each week, but he wants to be wealthy. Their traditional view is that the safest investment is the savings account at an insured bank. But if our hobo invests $3 per week in the banks, over 20 years, he'd only have about $3,000. On the other hand, if he invested $3 per week in the lottery, his odds of success would be trillions of times higher. The bank investment is certain to fail. And the hobo invests in the lottery because it is the safest investment to meet his goal. It has the lowest probability of failure. The hobo views risk as the probability of failing to achieve his goal. Football coaches also understand risk. When the team is down by a touchdown or less, they have possession in the last few seconds of the game, and they have the entire field to go, coaches sometimes call what is known as a Hail Mary. It's very unlikely to succeed, but far more likely than other plays. It's the safest play for the coach. Their traditional safe plays are far more likely to fail. They have a higher risk. The coach understands that risk is the probability of failure to achieve his goals. Let's see how the wisdom of the hobo can be applied to traditional investments. We're going to look at an investment in a small company stock fund. Traditionally, this is considered one of the more risky investments. The horizontal axis is time and the vertical axis is return. It's impossible to predict what future returns will be. They could be fantastic or they could be horrible. But we can estimate the risks associated with predicted future returns. This is the 5% line. There's a 5% risk that future returns will be below this line at any time and a 95% chance that future returns will be above this line. We can see that it's possible that returns could be worse than the 5% risk level. And it's important to understand that a 5% risk level is far from a guarantee. Risk is real and it cannot be eliminated. If a conservative investor were to purchase shares in this stock fund, he should anticipate a loss of no more than 42% at the end of five years. In other words, his goal will be to earn more than a 42% loss. Let's say he desires to have $10,000 at the end of five years for his child's college education. He must invest about $17,000 so that if a 42% loss occurs, the investment will still be worth $10,000. That may seem like a pretty unambitious goal, but that's as good a goal as a conservative investor will get out of this investment. And this certainly doesn't mean this is an appropriate investment for a conservative investor. We will show later that we can use this return to compare with other investments to find the optimal one for this conservative investor. Also, while this type of stock fund is considered risky in conventional wisdom, we can see that a conservative investor can invest with very low risk using this fund. 
the risk is associated with his goal and his very modest goal has low risk. He can fund his child's education with only a 5% risk of shortfall. Let's consider a more aggressive investor now. This is the 30% risk line. There's a 30% risk that the returns will be below this line at any time and a 70% chance the returns will be above it. Say there's an investor who wishes to celebrate her 50th birthday in five years. She would like to spend $10,000 to take her family on a trip. If the investment is not worth $10,000, she'll simply take them on a more modest vacation. So she's willing to accept a 30% risk. Therefore, her goal with this investment will be to earn 25% or more by the end of five years. She must invest about $8,000 so that if the returns are 25%, her end value will be $10,000. So here we have two investors investing in the exact same investment, yet with very different risks. The conservative investor will take a very pessimistic view of future returns from this investment and will have a goal of losing no more than 42%. There's a 95% chance he'll achieve or exceed his goal and only a 5% risk of shortfall. The aggressive investor will take a more optimistic view of returns and her goal will be to achieve a positive 25% return with this investment. She has a 70% probability of achieving her goal and a 30% risk of shortfall. The important point isn't that this is an appropriate investment for either of these investors. The point is the investment does not have risk per se. The goals have risk. Of course, risk can be even higher. This is the 50% risk line. This is a special risk level at which the investor transitions to gambler. This is not a pejorative. Gambling is a perfectly legitimate form of investing, as demonstrated in the case of the hobo and the coach. But this is certainly not an appropriate level of risk for most investors, especially in regards to retirement investing. But it's interesting to note that the goal of the 50% risk investor is to achieve average returns. In other words, the 50% risk line is the same as the average historical returns for this investment. Investors are defined by those who invest with goals below the 50% risk level, and so always anticipate lower than average returns. This ensures that they can meet their goals even in poor market conditions. Sadly, it wasn't uncommon too long ago that investment advisors and investment columnists would use average returns in predicting future returns. Most investors do not wish to fall short in their retirement with a flip of a coin. Coach and the hobo are gamblers, and they invest in areas above the 95% line. Entrepreneurs fail at a rate of about 80%, according to Bloomberg, and so they too might be considered gamblers. Again, that's not a pejorative. The hallmark of a gambler is a goal of above average returns with risks that are above 50%, and it's a perfectly rational form of investing. Now let's look at how an investor can choose between two investments. Here again are some example possible returns of the small company stock fund and the 5% risk line. Let's remove the possible returns from the stock fund and look at the possible returns of an intermediate term bond fund. It's immediately clear that the returns of the intermediate term bond fund have far less volatility than the small company stock fund. Let's zoom in and get a little closer. Now let's overlay the 5% risk line for bonds. For our example conservative investor who wishes to invest for his child's college education, the intermediate term bond fund is significantly better. Instead of requiring a goal of a loss of 42%, the 5% risk goal with the intermediate term bond fund is to earn 6%. That means that the conservative investor needs to invest only about $9,400 in the bond fund instead of $17,000 in the stock fund a much more attractive investment. The next step is to see how long-term investments differ from short-term investments. We'll look at an investment that will be held for 50 years. While 50 years seems like a long time for someone in or approaching retirement, bear in mind when a 40-year-old invests for retirement, some of that money may be used at the age of 90. More importantly, the purpose of this is to show the effects of time on selecting the optimal investment, and 50 years dramatically shows the difference. In the previous slides, we've used a conservative investor with 5% risk and an aggressive investor with 30% risk in our examples. 
In this example, we'll look at an investor who can tolerate 15% risk. This is what we consider a normal risk tolerance for a retirement investor, and the impact of investment length is quite dramatic for this investor's portfolio selection. We've expanded the horizontal axis out to 50 years. Before looking at the 50-year point, let's look at the 5-year point for this 15% risk investor. Shown here are the 15% lines for the stock fund and the bond fund over 5 years. For short-term investments, bonds have the strong advantage for this investor. In this case, the 15% risk investor's goal will be to achieve a 14% total return or better with bonds. If the investor uses the stock fund, his goal will be to achieve a 12% loss or better. So for the short term, bonds are the better investment for this investor. We can now zoom out on the vertical axis and see what the results look like at 50 years. At 50 years out, the story changes dramatically. Here's the 15% line for stocks, and here's the 15% line for bonds. For bonds, the goal for the 15% risk investor is a total return of almost 700%. For stocks, the goal is about 2,000%. Stocks are significantly better for the long-term investor. In fact, consider the 85% risk line for the bond fund. Stocks have an 85% chance of achieving the 2,000% returns while bonds have an 85% risk of not achieving the 2,000%. So we've seen in the previous slide that for the short term, this, this investor is better with the bond fund, but over 50 years, this investor is well advised to choose the stock fund. These are randomly generated potential returns for the small company stock fund and the intermediate term bond fund. The point of this chart is to show that the long-term investments will tend toward those investments that have more volatility and we have to gird ourselves to be tolerant of that volatility on a year-to-year -year basis. Despite their volatility, after 50 years, small stocks outperform bonds in the vast majority of cases. But on a year-to-year -year basis, small stocks can swing all over the place. To invest optimally for the long term requires some degree of fortitude. More to the point, the year-to-year -year volatility should not be a factor in selecting the long-term optimal investment. Be aware and be prepared for losses, but don't let them dictate your investment selection. Here's the summary and some additional notes. Investments do not have risk. Goals have risk. The optimal investment maximizes the goal for a given risk tolerance or minimizes the risk for a given goal. It's important to understand the potential for short-term losses, but using year-to-year -year volatility to select investments can increase risk. Investors, as opposed to gamblers, should not select investments that achieve the highest average returns. Again, they should maximize their goals or minimize their risk. Investors' goals are always below average returns for the investments they choose. If you would like to learn more, please call Sharon Lear of Guideway Financial at 512-487-7762 or email her at sharon.lear at guidewayfinancial.com.